bit too early, Angel. I'm not dead yet. Not yet, but it looks like you're going to die soon. Maybe. But you'll have to pardon me while I tend to some unfinished business first. Business? What can you possibly accomplish in your condition? You can't even hold your gun steady. Well, no unless I try. That thing's not gonna die unless I shoot it two or three times. Hey, what about him? He's dead. Really? Thank you. <clears throat> so I guess my time is up. Hey, Angel. I'm not gonna ask you to take me to heaven. But will you pray for me at least? Are you out of your mind? There's no bloody way I'm going to pray for you. But I guess I owe you because you saved me too. Payback time. Shut up! Keep it down! Okay, let's go. Stand up or I'll leave you here. What happened? It doesn't, doesn't hurt anymore. I'm cured. Yeah, and so I cured you, so what? You? You cured me. But, but I was almost dead. I'm confused, so you really are an angel? Don't be foolish. <laughs> Do you really think that there are angels on Earth? I'm no angel. I'm just a medium with a little curing. I'm, I'm Edward J. Plunkett. I know I look pretty shady, but you don't look too wholesome yourself. I... No, I'm not like you. And this is no place for people like you. Why did you come here? I heard a rumor. A rumor? I heard something in London. That the son of some rich family bought an old monastery. Spent a ton of money to convert it into a house. I heard he brought quite a lot of harlots here. Seems like he was having a great time. So... Where is this monastery? That's what I want to know. I came all this way to put a poor man's fear of God into this rich bastard. So far, I haven't found anything. Then this monster attacked me. I, I almost got killed. If you'd come any later, no doubt I'd be singing hymns in his stomach right you now. You shouldn't have bought such a good horse. She's too fast. Too bad you won't be hearing me sing those hymns. When I was a boy, I was a pretty good soprano. If you don't stop talking, I'll leave you here. My name is Kudalka, and I'm only going to say this once, so don't forget. If you want to get out of here alive, I suggest you stick very close. Got it? Charmed, I'm sure. How unusual that you two have decided to come to our rural district. There's really nothing interesting here. It has gotten so cold outside. We weren't expecting any visitors. The soup is all we have. Please, have as much as you want. Oh, yes, please. Thanks. It smells great. Wouldn't you like some, dear? Don't you like potato soup? No. It's not that. I'm all right for now. Thank you for your hospitality, though. <laughs> no trouble at all. Please let me know if there's anything we can do. We are the only ones who live here, and it's so rare that we get any visitors. So are you two really the only ones who live here? Why do you ask? 
Well, it was pretty foggy, so I couldn't tell for sure. But this building looked like an old church or something. Seems a little big, just for the two of you. You're right. In the ninth century, a saint from Ireland named Daniel Scotius built a place of worship here to appease monsters and evil spirits. That was how the Nemeton Monastery started. Or so I heard. Monsters. Is that right? Yes. What about them? You might not believe this, but we saw a monster on our way here. Is that so? You saw it too? You mean that monster's been around for a while? Well, we've been taking care of the monastery for a number of years, but from about six months ago, monsters have been appearing. We see them more and more every month. And I used to be a sailor. I'm not afraid of any monsters. Oh, dear. What if something terrible happens to you? We almost got killed back there. Now we're out of bullets. That's not good. The monsters might try and attack you again. I'll spare you some bullets. Thanks. That'd be great. Looking after others. He's so wonderful at that. So, have you two been together long? Yes, quite a while. Now, all he does is paint and maintain this old building. That's his daily routine. But back in the old days... Thanks, Ogden. I owe you one. Now this would make good rations. Let's take some with us. I can't believe it. Are you still hungry? I didn't have anything to eat or drink for three days. Of course I'm hungry. Speaking of which, you wasted all of that food. What's wrong with you? Yeah, if it weren't poison, then I would have had some. Pardon? I said, if the soup weren't poisoned, then I would have had some. Got it? Poison? <laughs> no way. Just a little bit. I smelled some poisonous plant. What's that? Oh. Oh, I can tell you how you're going to feel. In about half an hour, you won't be able to move your body. If you don't find an antidote, you'll definitely die. Uh, so they really were trying to kill us. But why? Don't know. But it seems they're quite used to doing it this way. <laughs> they must be hiding something. Listen, Edward. I'm going to try to cure you now, but you have to promise that when I do, you won't get mad and rush back to that couple right away. It's safer if we pretend we're dead and continue exploring this building. I think we'll find something interesting for sure. Happened. Oh, yes, that's right. That monster. Oh. Who on earth are you two? Hey, we rescued you, and that's your way of saying thanks? Little did I know that these these days were into rescuing perfect strangers. You. My name is Kadalka, and this is Edward. Would you mind telling us how you ended up collapsed on this path? My name is James. Oh, James O'Flaherty. I've been searching for something, and it took me to the monastery. Little did I know that it had become a breeding ground for demonic spirits. Then how did you get in here dressed like that? Through the main gate, of course. The caretakers welcome me with open arms. That husband and wife team? And the food? 
Was there no poison in your food? What are you talking about? Are you out of your mind? Those caretakers tried to poison and kill us. That's not funny. I find it inappropriate for you to try to dupe an upstanding believer of the Christian faith. So nothing happened to you then? Of course not. Not until I encountered that monster. Yeah? And we're the ones who took care of that monster. Far be it from me to expect any words of gratitude from you. I see. And I can tell from your appearances that the power of your faith alone was not enough to smooth things out with that monster. It wasn't the kind of problem that faith alone could solve. Ugh. Look at this plinth. It's broken now, but holy water ran from it until recently. But I've become distracted. Almighty God, please give me the strength to ward off these monsters. I can see that we've wasted our time here. Mm -hmm. Let's go, Kudelka. Just a minute. Although I'm under the protection of the Lord, it doesn't hurt to take precautionary measures. I think I'll go with you. What a dark and depressing building. Even with the temple, you can't feel the presence of the Lord's light. I can't believe I've stepped foot in this place. Where all have gone, and all must go, to be the nothing that I was. I have born to life and living woe. Lord Byron, no. I am not an admirer of his. In the first place, his poetry is unrefined. And who gave you the right to judge the refinement of poetry? Poetry should delve into the depths of the souls of the faithful. And others. It should inspire the soul as to Alexander Pope or George Herbert. If they have the power to do away with these evil spirits, I'd choose anyone. Even that dear old carpenter's son. Blasphemous! So <laughs> Pagan! How dare you utter such words of sin? To seek help from someone you've never met before is ridiculous, especially when people are dying from hunger every single day in London. Oh, they're all filthy anymore, little beggars that deserve to die. Heaven is... That doesn't sound like a demonic spirit to me. The noise is coming from that building over there. The poison didn't kill us, so now they're taking the fast and easy way now. Don't be ridiculous! Why don't you ask the bullets who's being ridiculous? You idiots! My goodness. This building is full of dead bodies and skeletons. It's full of ghosts and spirits. Oh, I can feel them. Oh, my head hurts. I got a bad feeling about this. Horrible. Dear Lord, please save these lost souls. This must have happened a long time ago. Oh, and the power is so strong. If I can channel some of these spirits, maybe I can find out what happened here. Channel the spirits? Shame on you. You two should be praying for their souls. The spirits floating in this room. I can let them possess my body so they can talk. Oh, the reason I came here is I heard the cry of one particular female voice. She was I will not stand for this. Not only do you not believe in God, but now you're going to disturb the spirits? Shut up! Would you stop bothering me? Oh, oh. Chains and darkness. Oh. oh. Death. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. There were so many of them. This is hell. Oh. What? What's going on? Oh, they were imprisoned and tortured. And, oh, 
thousands of them. Kill them! They cut off my fingers. They crushed my legs. They smashed my head and cut out my guts. They took everything from me. They locked me up and chopped my body. Yeah! Oh, my eyes! Oh, my ears! Oh, they're burned! Help! Help! <gasps> How horrible. This place used to be a prison for hundreds of years, kept in secret. Whoever went against the authorities or misconducted themselves in any way were locked up here and killed. No! Don't touch me! You piss off! Go to hell! <laughs> hey! Hey! Wait a minute. Hey! Edward! You should have just died before. I wanted you to lay down and die. <laughs> A ghost? Did you see all those bodies? Be quite a party if they were alive. They've probably been abandoned for hundreds of years. Must be some fascinating old stories. I saw some pretty fresh ones, too. One who was shot. One who'd been cracked in the head with an axe. And some with no visible signs of injury. They must have been poisoned. I bet the new ones were fortune seekers like us. That old couple must You have mean to tell me they killed all those people? Rubbish. All those deaths are rubbish? They're all liars and thieves anyway. This is still a monastery. This is still God's house, prison or no. Why all those liars and heathens are killed is none of my concern. How could you possibly say a thing like that? That doesn't sound very priestly. I am not a priest. I am a bishop. I don't give a rat's ass what you are. Look, I'm not saying that all of those people were saints, okay? But that doesn't mean that they should be put to death. You saw that old couple. They're so well-mannered, kind. You think they're killers? Good manners? Yes. Think about it. Why would they leave the place such a mess? I don't know. You think they'd at least bury the body? Possibly. Anyway, I have this strange feeling we're not alone with all these bodies and ghosts. You'd better keep your mouth shut, if you want to live. Kudelka, did you find anything? No, nothing, but... How does it look? You think we can get out? I don't think so. You'd need the strength of a bear to break those bars with your hands. What do you mean we can't get out? How hard can it be? Why don't you ask these guys? Damn it! Did you see that? Someone's in here. Will you shut up and get us out of here? How hard can it be for thieves like you to get us out of a place like this? Try saying that in the East End, holy man. Your severed head would hit the ground before you even finish the thought. This is worthless. I can't believe I'm wasting my time on you. I'm on a mission from God. What a waste. Such a terrible waste. <laughs> my name is Charlotte. Not that it means anything. Not that you have a prayer. I'm talking to three dead people. Nobody's gonna save you. No. So you died here as well? Yes. 
I died here too, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. They locked me up in here right after I was born. They beheaded me the day I turned nine. Happy birthday. I've been trapped here ever since, and no one even knows who I am. <laughs> My poor little angel. <laughs> poor little angel? Me? Save your pity for yourself. You'll be dead within three days. Not true. I don't know what your circumstances are, but I know that your mother loved you very, very much. My mother? I don't know her face, her name, where she came from. Nothing. You're telling me that means nothing? From the day I was born, the day I died, no one ever loved me. And I never want to be loved. Just die! All of you! Just die! Amazing! Absolutely amazing! I can't believe these treasures are in this monastery. Is that Montaigne's signature? Oh, that's a Caravaggio! Unbelievable, truly! Why have these treasures been forgotten? Treasures. If these treasures can be contributed to the Vatican, their value to Christianity is unquantifiable. What a discovery! Do you remember what this place is? It's not just a monastery, it was a prison. People were executed for fighting each other for supremacy. These treasures must have been taken from them. Soaked with curses and hatred. You'll be cursed if you worship those things. I am a busy man that does not have the patience to teach you the importance of faith. But I will tell you why we have found these treasures. It could only have come from the guidance of God. God sees all, he knows all. Got it? Preach to the converted. What about you, Edward? You seem a little more educated than she. I don't really care. Talk to me about monetary value. <laughs> Save the holy crap. <laughs> it seems I'm disappointed once again. I believe these dead thieves are better than you two. At least they appreciated true value. Instead of preaching, I want you to understand something, okay? You can't label all those dead bodies as thieves hunting treasure. I saw plenty of dead women who were cut up and mixed in with the mummies. And they were pretty fresh. Yeah. Strange. Even if I were used to seeing dead bodies, I'd be vomiting. So it is that couple. But Fools! Why? How could such a kind and faithful couple be cold-blooded killers? This is the work of jealousy and greed. And pagans born of savagery. Immigrants. I will not be a party to such abusive slander. This is... this is so unpleasant. You always blame everything on the savagery of pagans. Are all men of the cloth like that? It's senseless to tell you this, but the truth is... What the... He's been sneaking around in the shadows and sniffing for treasure. Just like us. Well, sir, explain yourself. Yeah. It's as plain as day this ruffian's a bloodthirsty killer who's been chasing us. Where are you from, Hamburg? Not that it really matters. You're obviously a dirty immigrant thief. Probably infected with cholera or something most of you are. None of your business! Where I was born, you bastard! Look, I don't really care where you were born. And I agree. <laughs> he is a bastard. But tell me, did you kill all these people? Look, I'm an immigrant. I'm a thief, and maybe I did drop a chandelier on you. But that's just because I wanted the whole pie for myself. So you, you gotta... did kill all these people? No. I swear to God. Not your God, bigot. What do you mean? It was the couple. The couple who look after this place. What? I'm telling you the truth. I've seen him. 
I've been down here a long time. Usually they use an axe when they catch thieves. The thieves come down here unarmed. They're stupid. They get caught from behind. I'd watch my back if I were you. Unbelievable. No, I'm telling you. The lucky ones die on the first strike. I've heard the others screaming through the night, clutching their bellies. I find them in the morning dead. No, I'm telling you, their fingers to their hearts. Right through to their organs for the pain. Look, take it or leave it. But I'm telling you the truth, those two, they're Satan incarnate. I may look shady, but killing's not my style. Look, the more wholesome they look on the outside, the colder and uglier the heart is. Just look at him! <laughs> yeah. Good assessment for a thief. You're crazy if you believe this scoundrel. This killer's obviously executed hundreds of people. He needs to be turned into the police and judged in a proper forum. We're crazy. Why? Just because he's an immigrant? Or is it because he's one of the unsaved? That's bull and you know it, you pig-headed old bigot. What I'm trying I to say is... I believe this guy. Thieves can be exceedingly honest, you know? Still... He did try to kill us. For that. What? what did you do that for? If our lives cease being threatened, then it's a victory for God and all his glory, right? But if we go on letting them attack us, then the filthy, godless pagans win. Which would you like to bet on? Hey, what's this? The Princess Alice? Well, she was a pleasure boat that went down in a terrible accident in the Thames. This one too. And this one. What's going on? They're all the Princess Alice. I just want to make you happy. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes. That woman was Lane. She summoned me here. This one's Milius. And Lambsbrick. And Michael Mayer. And Kunras Ampathiatrum Sapienta Eternae. What a collection of books. May I ask you something? What are all these? Ancient books on mysticism and alchemy. Ancient science. It's enticing, really. It's all about making gold from lead. It's just a ruse peddled by power-hungry tricksters blinded by greed. But in amongst the trash, there are some valuable works. 
illustrating basic useful experiments for predicting the laws of nature. Predicting a time when all men will be treated equally. God's will. No room for this argument nowadays. James. Hermeticism, you... Kabbalah, meaningless. Why, why is it not here? What? Where else can it be? Are you looking for something? I don't understand. I don't understand. You don't understand. I don't understand. What are you grumbling about? You're acting really strange. Just cut the charade and tell us what's going on. I do not like this. We all have our reasons. Let's not delve into each other's personal affairs. I am not bound to please thee with my answers. Do all men kill the things they do not love? Hate any man the thing he would not kill? And I thought all outlaws read just simple, stupid poets. You read Shakespeare. You're smarter than you look. That makes two of us. What? What is that? Is that just a mummy? Cross your fingers. That was disappointing. Holy Savior! The secret of the Fomors from the bottom of the sea. Emigre! Did you say Emigre document? What do you know about the Emigre document? Where is it? Answer me! Emigre document? Is that what you've been looking for? Hey, you crotchety old fart! I am sick of this. You don't want to talk? Fine. I'll slit your holy throat and leave your body for the rats. Edward. I have no choice. Here it is. I'm on instructions direct from the Vatican. There is a manuscript. It's said to be somewhere in the building. And that manuscript is? Right. It's called the Emigre document. Is it very important? For hundreds of years, it was kept deep inside the Vatican Library. No one was allowed to read it. In fact, many people thought it didn't even exist. That's weird. So why is it here now? Somebody stole it. Stolen? From the Vatican? Right. No way. Not many people could steal a thing like that from the Vatican. You really have to know the place, or have enough money. According to our secret investigation, however, the wealthy gentleman who purchased this monastery bribed someone within the Vatican to steal the immigre document for him. Wealthy gentleman? Yes. Patrick Hayworth. My friend. But it's not like it was priceless art or something. Why would he be interested in a thing like that? For years, Patrick has dabbled in mysticism and alchemy. He's on the brink of crossing the line, playing God. Playing God? Creating life, Edward. It's thought that the ancient druids forbidden secrets on eternal life and resurrecting the dead are contained in the Immigre document. I can't believe that. Of course, it's just silly superstition. That's why I'm here, to try to convince Patrick to drop his dangerous experiments and return the Immigre document to the Vatican. Wow. You'd never guess that a lunatic like that was living here by looking at the place. According to the caretakers, he lives in the building next to the temple. They said that? Yes, they're terrified. With all the crazy things going on around here now, they haven't even seen Patrick, yet they feel indebted to him. They've asked me here to see if I can save him. So that's your story? I don't know. One more mystery that needs unraveling. What the? What's that bell? Just the passing of another day. Oh no, today's All Saints Day.
Their spiritual energy is coming together. What power? It's like... Monster. What's happening? This can't be. No! Kudalka! We can't handle that many passengers! The sky is getting dark! The draft! The draft! We are sinking! Bessie! Bessie! The meat is burning! It's burning! No! It's not working! No! Hey! Hey! Where are you going? Where are you going? Hey, you! No! We're sinking! Wait! My, my boat! My boat! Are you awake? These ruffians! You harlot! Stumpet! Have you no shame? Oh, if only Elaine had been saved, we wouldn't be in this mess. Elaine? Ah, uh, yes. She was merciful. She was benevolent, she believed me, and she was fond of my paintings. Your paintings? The sun it wasn't my fault! All of a sudden, there was a coal ship out of nowhere. It was dark. What could we do? It sank so fast. I was faultless. Elaine. Poor, poor Elaine. If only I'd stayed with her. Hey, you! You! Hey! How's that? Just a lamp? You will make you just a lamp! You're crazy! Shut up! Honey, let's stop this now. It's time to stop. It's okay. It's over. I'm sorry. My husband, a long time ago, he was the captain of a big pleasure boat. It was a gorgeous boat. He was so proud of it. But then there was the accident. So many people died. Everyone blamed my husband. It was so difficult for him. He started drinking heavily. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? No matter how much you drink, you can't forget such a tragedy. But he met Elaine. She believed he was innocent. She helped him carry on. This Elaine, she's dead? Yes. Why is it that good people seem to die so early? What a waste. While Elaine's husband Patrick was traveling, a robber broke into their house. My husband has always said, if only I had been there for her. We should stop this conversation now. My husband is waiting. He can be so impatient, you know. Thank God. I was so worried. Are you okay? Are you hurt? No. I'm okay. How about you? I almost got creamed by that monster. Luckily, I went down the side hallway. Walls caved in. We can't get back to the sanctuary. 
I figured if you'd escaped from the garden, you'd be here. Thank God I took the underpass. Ah, it's no use. This door won't open. Damn it! Is there another way out? Aren't you underneath the arbor? There is. There is another door across from the cathedral. The cathedral, that's right. There's got to be another way out. A secret passage or something. Secret passage? Okay, let's split up. Kadelka, start from that door. We'll go along the wall. Find a place to regroup, clear? Got it. Kadelka. Yeah? Don't get killed. Same to you. Oh, you oh, repent now. Judgment day is near. The cacophonous sound of seven bugles will consume the heavens, and all sinners will burn in the fiery wrath of the Lord. Uh, but I, no, I will not die. Mm -hmm. Death knows no boundaries. It is an integral part of each and every life. Death is ultimately an act of grace and love from the Lord. <laughs> oh, a blessing, is it not? <laughs> oh, Daniel Scotius Eregina, blameless soul. That man has not a heart to be found in his body. Though I do thank him for building the monastery here. And you are? Where are my manners? <laughs> Hello! My name is Roger Bacon. I am a monk from the Franciscan Order. A monk? And I thought you were a mummy. <laughs> yes. You are quite right in your assessment of me. Sun-dried kippers may be more pleasant to look at than dull. My shriveled up appearance. There was a time when I was hailed as the foremost warlock. But my profession seems to go in and out of fashion with the passage of time. Can't do much about that, can I? You are a strange man. <laughs> That's if you can be called a man. I have given up being a man many hundreds of years ago. I am no longer a person. Though I hesitate to answer questions regarding my existence because I have yet to figure out exactly what I am. That's fine. It's not that I need to know anyway. But tell me, why were you sleeping in such a strange place? I've never been able to awake in a good mood. <laughs> and I just plan to rest for a while. What year is it, anyway? Are we still on the Gregorian calendar? Are you trying to fool me, or are you being serious? Of course I'm being serious. The clock I own was too big for the coffin. It's 1898. Lord have mercy. I've been asleep for close to a hundred years. Well, I guess there are some things that still surprise you. Watch out. When life begins to lack the element of surprise, that's when you are walking down the path to the Lord. <laughs> anyway, as a token of my appreciation, I'm going to keep the metal gate unlocked for you. Go through the gate. <laughs> Why would you do this for me? Well, it seems to me that your friends are running amok inside the monastery grounds. They're making so much noise. Would you mind? Telling them to keep it quiet, huh? Hmm? <laughs> Kadoka! Edward. Oh, thank goodness you're okay. That's not completely the case. I have some bad news for you. I saw the caretakers, both the husband and wife. Really? Where were they? They're dead. Apparently, they were the ones responsible for killing all the thieves and desperados that were sneaking into the monastery. And with good reason. I don't know. 
I don't believe You should know very well what has been going on. Ogden was trying to avenge the death of Elaine. Death of Elaine? I don't believe it. This is preposterous. Who is Elaine? I have no idea. All I know is Elaine's spirit called me to this place. Tell me, who is Elaine? And Patrick. The caretakers told me that robbers broke into Elaine's home while Patrick was away and murdered her. Elaine was a benefactor for the caretakers. They took it upon themselves to murder every single robber and desperado that entered their grounds. It was a form of revenge for them. I'm originally from Ireland, you see. Although small, my family had a successful business and was soon able to send me to school, which I loved from a very early age. I was soon accepted to a prestigious university in England. And with my parents' assistance, I made my way across the ocean. I met Patrick at university. We were both studying chemistry and embarking upon similar paths. About that same time, I began competing for the love of a beautiful woman, Elaine, and we had a falling out. I loved Elaine with all my heart. Omnia wins into more, but love does not conquer all. I soon discovered that I lacked the social status and inheritance money necessary to properly care for someone so well-bred and sheltered as Elaine. I gave up my suit and made way for Patrick. To ease my pain, I joined the church and left the secular world behind. And being the perfectionist I am, the Vatican made me a bishop in charge of some very important matters. But it's been so hard to distance myself from one's emotional attachments. Although I had not seen them for 20 years, I wish them all the best in their life together. And if it hadn't been for this, I wouldn't have thought twice about seeing Patrick again. That's right, Patrick. How, how can this be? He promised me he was going to take care of Elaine and make her happy. What could have happened? Being a witness to the gory aftermath. I have a hard time believing the caretakers were acting on revenge alone. Believe me, it was an unimaginably heinous sight. And what about these monsters that keep appearing? No, there's a bigger secret we have yet to uncover. This is the key to Patrick's mansion. Shall we go? Charlotte. Stop it. If you keep this up, you're the only one that's going to get hurt. I'm not fooling around. I don't want your pity. I have enough. Charlotte, listen to me. I understand you. We're very similar, you know. You could never understand me. How could you? I've never been out of this place. I was born and I was executed. On the day I was killed, a priest came to me and said, Dear Lord, please accept into your glorious kingdom. This poor, sinful lamb. Tell me, what did I do that was so bad? Is it my fault that I was born? If I was born just to be killed, why did she have me? Oh, I just... My mother abandoned me, too. I've been alone ever since I was a little girl, just like you. That's why I... That's why what? That's why you understand me? That's why you're like me? Don't make me laugh. You're not like me. You're alive. What do you mean you're alone? What do you mean you understand? Give 
me a break. Oh, Charlotte, I'm so sorry. I want you to understand. I really... A curse upon you. What? A curse upon you. Charlotte. On you, on your friends, a curse upon you all. I will kill everything. Why don't you all just die? Die! When everything is dead and gone, then it will be the same. Only then will you understand my pain. I know what it is to regret being for. I will kill you! Kill you! Kill you! Charlotte, do you know what these are? They're letters from your mother. Did you know that your mother was a queen of Hanover? It seems that after you were born in secret, your mother was locked up inside Alden Castle. Even while she was imprisoned there, she sent many letters to you here in the monastery. She never laid eyes on you, but she often imagined what you looked like. She dreamt of the day when she would be able to see you. Her letters never got to you. And she was never told of your death, so she continued to write you letters, even after you died. Your mother loved you, Charlotte. What? No. no. I can't, I can't take, take this now. now. She, she loved love me? me? No. 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 It, it's too, too scary. scary. Hey, hey, I feel warm. warm. What's, What's happening? happening? No. no. Help, Help me. me. You want me to bring you here? You love me? me? Charlotte, how does it feel to know you are loved? Hmm. I it's around here somewhere. Hmm. Well, what took you so long? Roger, I have was in the coffin? Since when have you two been acquainted? I am no mummy. My name is Roger Bacon, and I'm just like any normal old man. Hey, I've been around for 20 years, and I have yet to run across an old man as abnormal as yourself. I see. Well, I've been around for 600 years, and I've seen plenty of abnormal people just like myself. My dear old man. Might you be related to the great warlock, Roger Bacon, who made such a name for himself in the 13th century? <laughs> you are very knowledgeable! I am that warlock, Roger Bacon, you speak of. You mean to tell me that you were born in 1210 and have remained alive and well until the present date of 1898? Actually, to be precise, I was born in 1214. Kudelka. What type of a joke is this? That's my question. Well, this is no joke! I am the reputable Roger Bacon! Very well, then. If you were truly that Roger Bacon, then you'll be able to tell me with whom and where you studied. Oh, that's easy. I entered Oxford in 1247 and studied under the tutelage of Robert Grosteste. Although a good professor, I would not consider him to be a wise man. I penned my masterpiece, Opus Maius, as well as numerous other books on natural science. Being a visionary pioneer, Hmm. I must say that my work has influenced generations of work that followed. But alas, in hindsight, that work pales in comparison to the work I did copying the immigre document for the Pope. The immigre documents? I figured you would know about that book. Of course. It took me five years to copy the book in its entirety. I know everything there is to know about the book. What is it about? Oh, is it, it unravels the secrets of life that expand far beyond the largest field. It speaks of the secret rituals conducted by the ancient race of Fomors on immortality. The Fomors would claim the lives of the resurrected as their own. They reversed the laws of nature and the cycle of life. 
when the Druids took over the Celts. Alexander the Great penned the emigre documents in Greek for placement in the Great Library. Resurrecting the dead. Oh, it is true. The document has long been considered the most dangerous work of literature. It was safely guarded in the caverns of the Supreme Pontiff's quarters. But apparently, the book was not able to withstand the wares of time over generations. And the Pope decreed that a new edition be created by copying the full text. That is where I came in. The Pope requested that I copy the book word for word. And when the work was finished, apparently, I was supposed to be killed. <laughs> but I am not one to be dealt with so carelessly. I secretly escaped, and eventually I made my way to the sacred land referred to in the text of the immigre document. <laughs> and the secret rituals? Oh, don't tell me. You need look no further than myself. And you succeeded. Hmm. Although I cannot perform the same on others, yes, I have been able to escape the hands of death. But I have not been able to escape the roots of existence, which are the seeds of change. My body is not immune to change, as you can see by my hideous appearance. I've had nothing to do other than roam the earth for the last 300 years. I've seen all I can take of mankind's cruelty. So, I returned here for some rest. <laughs> well, um, enough of this gossip. I've got some research to do. <laughs> May I ask to be left alone? So this is Elaine? Yes. She's the one I had the psychic vision of. Do you doubt it? No, indeed. Good. Let's begin. It has been a long time indeed, Mr. O'Flaherty. Oh, Elaine, is that really you? Yes, it is. It is such a pity that we meet again, and I can only present myself to you in this form. This is the woman that responded to my voice, is it not? Thank you for doing this for someone like myself. Elaine, I haven't yet come to terms. Please tell me how this happened to you. Of course I will explain. James, 18 years ago, I was murdered by some thieves that broke into my home. I was helpless. Both Patrick and Ogden were out on business. There was nothing that anyone could do. I will not accept this. This should not have happened. Yes. Patrick responded the same exact way. He could not accept my death. He spent years and years perfecting his craft in wizardry and tried everything in his power to bring me back to life. Resurrecting the dead? Is this for real? Hey, we're not talking about Frankenstein here. Frankenstein? That novel written about a hundred years ago? He was taking it very seriously. And he had found the key to actually make it happen. The immigrant document. Yes. With Ogden's assistance and the powers from ancient druids, he held a resurrection ceremony in this monastery. But... But something went wrong, didn't it? He only resurrected my physical body. As you can see, my soul is still doomed to roaming the universe forever separated from my body. And the terrifying thing is that my body was resurrected as a heartless monster. 
monster. Although the monster may look like me, it is not me. Mr. O'Flaherty, please turn my body into ashes with your power. Ashes? But if I do that, we won't be able to bring you back to life. Mr. O'Flaherty, I was robbed of my life by those thieves, and I could hate them as mortal enemies. Choose to think that my death was preordained by the Lord. Please, do not mourn my death. It was wrong for Patrick to try to resurrect me. To undo the work of God. Please, do not be sad. Death is at the heart of God's reasoning. I urge you to destroy my body. Its existence defies the wise providence of heaven. It mustn't exist in this world. Wait, <laughs> Elaine! God! What a cruel world! I gave everything for your happiness, and now what have I left with? I have no meaning in my life. Damn it! What have I been doing with my life? Elaine! Elaine! Hmm. I know it's here. I, I saw it here. I put it here. Uh, what? Uh, have you come round to see me again? I want you to look at this. <laughs> Research journal. I want you to tell us whether what's written there can actually happen or not. Well, let me see. Hmm. Yes, yes, I see. Oh, that's right. Resurrecting the dead. Ooh. A cauldron. The Branwyn Tales, indeed. Yes. It is most likely that the events detailed here did take place. Just as I thought. But that's so frightening that Personally, it... Personally, I have not attempted it. I am certain that the immigre document contained accounts of secret rituals conducted to resurrect the dead. But as you can tell from reading this, it involves complicated preparatory work. I had given up discerning the impossibility of fusing the psychic powers necessary to create such an immense psychic platform. Moreover, I never expected that people would attempt to challenge such a feat. The journals say that the physical body was resurrected, but not the soul. Absolutely. The ancients held the secret to life in the palm of their hands. <laughs> but they could never come close to touching the secrets of the soul. They resurrected the dead in order to use their physical bodies as a workforce, thus building the great civilization we oftentimes speak of. In fact, we would not be far off if we called them a puppeteers. <laughs> Exploiting the human body as an object. If so, then we Yes, they... resurrecting the dead and restoring them to life as it was before death is him. Possible. Then how do you return the resurrected body once again to Earth? That is a very complicated question, since it already defies universal logic. Please. It is no easy task. Tell me how. It's Woody Lane, God rest her soul, wanted. Right. <laughs> it is not absolutely impossible. Uh, but I would need to call forth the sacred powers in order to complete such a feat. Hmm. Oh, yes. I know that the arm of Daniel Scotius, the man who built this monastery, is stored in a stone statue on the ground. If, if we... Throw that into a cauldron. We will 
successfully destroy the roots of the Tree of Life. Oh, after that, I haven't a clue whether to call forth the energies of fire or entrust the task to water. Oh, it is so complicated. Fire no. or water? What are we going to do? Oh, Heavenly Father, bless our souls and bring forth an end to this suffering. Oh... This must be the temple. There's no way! If I put a bullet through it, it wouldn't budge. What are we gonna do? How ironic to have made it this far and not have access to the temple. Kudelka, Edward, you both must go now. It is my friend that is apparently responsible for this disturbance, and therefore I am partially responsible for this trouble. I have no intention of asking for your sympathy, and I'm in no position to plead for your help. So from this point forward, I can manage on my own. Don't kid yourself. We didn't come along just for your sake. No, Kudoka, you should go back now. It'll be far too dangerous. Edward, you're the one who should go home. You were not meant for this world. Granted, you are a good fighter, having had plenty of experience, and I won't deny the fact that you have the killer instinct either. But when all is said and done, you are an average Joe. I am not. I was meant to exist in this realm. It's the only place I can carve out an existence for myself. Quit lecturing me. I want no part of a lukewarm existence filled with regret. No. My way is to not worry about consequences, and to do whatever it is I want to do. Chance means nothing to me. Life's a gamble, and once you place your bet, you'd better play to win, or else you end up dead. Edward, you really are ridiculous. That's what they tell me. Do as you like. That I will. Oh, suddenly when you feel like it, you decide when you can and cannot open doors? Wait, there's a way. Remember when we were searching Patrick's mansion? There was various chemicals around. It may take some time, but I think I can combine the chemicals to make nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin? That's great! We're talking powerful explosives here. For this door, I think we'll need a full flask. Indeed, if I drop the flask before I return, I'll be knocking on Heaven's door in a flash. It is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or hell. I'm going to begin my work. Can you two wait for me here? And then, uh, <laughs> what happened to the girl, Melanie? <laughs> she was gone the next morning. She left with practically everything in the room. You don't have much to look with women, do you? <laughs> well, you know what they say. The cleanest breakup is when a woman runs out on you. What is <laughs> statement. <laughs> oh, but you're lucky. I mean to have so many people to kid around with. For me, I'm all alone. I've been all alone all my life. What about your childhood? <laughs> yes, I did have a childhood. I was born in a small town in Wales, right off the banks of the Tulesian River. It was a small gypsy town. Gypsy? That's right. Gypsy. And we didn't call ourselves Gypsy. We called ourselves Rom. <laughs> See, a true Gypsy is born under the blue sky and is destined to die under the same blue sky. It's Gypsy law. So then I guess you plan on dying underneath the blue skies? Mm -mm. Every Gypsy is given a name at birth. My given name was Slato. Slato? Mm-hmm. It's got a strange resonance to that name. 
What does it mean? I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that too must be part of the law. <laughs> <laughs> the law it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ever since I met you, enigmatic, mysterious glint in your eyes. Man, it must be the gypsy in you. A glance from thy soul-searching eye can raise with hope, depress with fear. Byron again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You must really like him, don't you? Yes. So I feel as though we're birds of a feather. Then he must be self-obsessed as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be classified as a romantic. My father was a strict man. and couldn't forgive his son for failing academically. He blamed my failure on the time I wasted inventing adventures, dreaming of a utopian landscape. I was brought up to believe that dreams, the power of the imagination, as well as all the things I loved as a child, were useless, a complete waste of time. It was as if he was telling me I was useless. And then again, may be just that. And I think I was probably born too late. By the time I was 15, everything there was to be done had already been done. I, the western territories were colonized. The jungles had been explored. I, there was no wilderness for me to wander into. No jungles for me to cut my way through. I guess that's how I ended up roaming the country. Granted, I picked a few fights along the way, played with fire, gambled on my life a few times, but none of that comes close to the truth I'm searching for. I yearn for something far greater. I can't quite explain myself. But it's as though I'm on a quest for some intangible treasure of sorts. Kadok, I envy you. You have psychic powers that few are blessed with. And being born a gypsy, you can choose to live how you wish. And who gave you the right to act as if you figured me out? Do you have any idea how I was raised? <laughs> you make me laugh. Adventures. Please, you haven't the slightest clue. Do you have any idea how much pain my psychic powers have brought me? My father died when I was only a child. I predicted the exact time place and ending of my father's life. Imagine that, predicting your own father's death. Hmm. No, I was cursed as a child, being given powers not meant for a child. And my mother, oh, she, she was so frightened and so full of hatred for me. She tried to kill me with her very hand. The gypsy elders got together and decided to excommunicate me. I was only nine then. Do you have any idea how a nine-year-old child survives without the help of a living soul? Treasures, you must be joking. Have you ever cried and begged for your next meal? Did you ever sell your body, seeking shelter from the frigid night air? <laughs> I used to be just like Charlotte. When she cried and said, no one has ever loved me. Oh, her words cut straight through me. It was me she was talking about. 
just like her, I wish that everybody would die and harbor a hatred for all mankind. But you see, Charlotte has made her peace and gone heaven. Me, I'm still alive and still home alone. No one has ever lent a helping hand. No one. Kadoka, you? I'm not as free as you make me out to be. I am a poor, dirty, ignorant woman who threw her gypsy pride to the dogs in order to live. But you see, even someone like me can do good. Because with my powers, I can help ease the pain of others. That's when I feel good about living. I don't need to be loved. I just want my life to have some meaning. I just want someone to tell me they need me. <laughs> you. <laughs> no way will <laughs> you ever understand. <laughs> done. It's completed. Hey, what are you doing? What's that? No, don't! I'm not asking for your help. This is my problem. None of you need to die with me here. Are you sure? Let's proceed. St. Daniel Scotius, protect us from these evil spirits and grant us inner strength. Amen. Created and born out of dust. Now go quietly and return to thy maker! Thank you. 
I have seen the most interesting happenings. It would be a waste to go back to sleep just yet. <laughs> Hey, Kudelka. I wonder what she was about to say. Dead people don't speak. It's just in your memories. Huh? Is that how you explain what we just saw? I guess. Memories. Somebody told me that after a loved one's death, all we have is memories. In these, we maintain an eternal bond with the dead. Dear God, is this my fault? Do you blame me? Are you punishing me now because the path to my faith was tainted? I accept my fate. If it is your wish, then I accept my fate. He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to be killed with a sword, with the sword he will be killed. I am what I am. I am content with my lot. I have always loved you, Elaine. There must be something we can do. We'll be fine. Trust me. In these crazy times, young people push themselves too much. sun came out. I prefer it a little hazier, though. Goodbye. We'll probably never see each other again. Hey, your nickname. Slato? What does it mean? I haven't even asked you yet. Will you tell me? It... it means... treasure. Oh, that's rich. I'll remember that. Treasure. Is it okay, child, for you not to follow him? Yeah, it's okay. I have a feeling that someday, somewhere, we'll meet again. <laughs> 